वेलकम टू गेट अकेडमी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब सिंक्रोनस मशीन फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द सिंक्रोनस मशीन एंड देन वी विल मूव टूवर्ड्स द नमेरिकल्स ऑफ सिंक्रोनस मशीन ओके सिंगल फेज टाइप्स ऑफ स्पेशल टाइप्स ऑफ सिंक्रोनस मशीन दे आर रिलक्टेंस एंड हिस्टोरेसिस मोटर्स दैट वी विल कवर इन दिस टॉपिक ओके नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट सिंक्रोनस मशीन सिंक्रोनस मशीन आर द लार्जेस्ट एनर्जी कन्वर्टर इन दिस वर्ल्ड ओके सो यू कैन से सर एज अ जनरेटर सिंक्रोनस मशीन इज वेरी प्रेफरेबल बोथ यू कैन से सिंगल फेज एज वेल एज थ्री फेज बोथ द सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर आर प्रेफरेबल बिकॉज सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर इज केपेबल टू डिलीवर एक्टिव एज वेल एज रिएक्टिव पावर बोथ ओके सिंक्रोनस मशीन आर जनरली ड्यूली एक्साइटेड मशीन हैविंग ए सी ऑन स्टेटर एंड डी सी ऑन रोटर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट सिंक्रोनस मशीन देन फर्स्ट ऑब्जर्व सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर सम बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर सो सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर आर द लार्जेस्ट एनर्जी कन्वर्टर इन दिस वर्ल्ड सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर सिंक्रोनस जनरेटर आर largest energy converter in this world okay one more thing synchronous generator can deliver active as well as reactive power and they are the prime energy sources of all electrical energy we consume you can say prime source of all electrical energy we consume so they are very important for us because whatever we are using uh, nowadays each and everything is uh, based uh, you can say almost all the machines uh, basic machines are induction type of uh, machines so they all needed active and reactive power both like our ac fan motors all other things you can say tube light so all will need active and reactive power both and the greatest advantage of synchronous machine is that it can generate active and reactive power both induction can only generate the active power dc can generate active power but it can generate active as well as reactive power both so this changes the entire world after the invention of this changes the entire world and electric transmission generation will become quite simple however the use of synchronous motor is lower if we talk about synchronous motors then use of synchronous motor is lower synchronous motors are primarily used for the power factor improvement so you can say use of synchronous motor is lower as ns is equals to 120 f by p and that is its speed depends upon supply frequency so use of synchronous motor is lower because the speed of the synchronous motor is a uh, dependent upon the uh, supply frequency and this is not a self started machine so in case if the frequency variation occurs then there may be a possibility that synchronization fails and motor stops so that is why we use synchronous motors lower synchronous motors are generally used for power factor improvement used mostly for power factor power factor improvement like synchronous condenser or or synchronous reactor also called as rotating var compensator
okay so use of synchronous motor is lower because the speed is mainly depends upon the frequency and <coughs> three phase synchronous motor is not a self started motor so there will be a problem of desynchronization in case if the supply frequency to the motor uh, changes okay now please see you can say sir the same machine can act as a motor as well as as a generator so if you uh, buy a synchronous motor and if you start rotating the rotor while uh, supplying the stator from some three phase supply then it will become a synchronous generator so the same machine can act as a motor as well as generator it totally depends upon the side of excitation so you can say sir same machine can same machine can be used as generator or motor the same machine can be used as generator or motor synchronous generator or synchronous motor now please observe the power flow when you are using as a synchronous generator so power flow for power flow in generator action so power flow in generator action is we apply power to the in mechanical input power to the shaft so mechanical input power is equals to output electrical power plus losses in case of synchronous generator and power flow in case of synchronous motor is power flow in motor so power flow in synchronous motor is input electrical power input electrical power is equals to output mechanical power plus losses okay this is your power flow in case of motor power flow in case of generator so the same machine can be used as a motor as well as a generator it totally depends upon the side of excitation if the mechanical side of excitation then machine will act as a generator and if the electrical side of excitation then machine is act as a motor synchronous motors are synchronous machines are duly excited machine however each and every generator is a duly excited one side field another side is mechanical but especially for the synchronous machine whether it is operating in a motoring mode or in a generating mode it is acting uh, it is a duly excited machine so synchronous machine is duly excited machine having ac on armature and dc on field synchronous machine is a duly excited machine having ac on armature and dc on field you can say sir in synchronous machine in synchronous machine i am representing this on this side please see in synchronous machine ac is on ac is on stator and dc is on rotor recommended so you can say why it is recommended sir why ac is on why synchronous why in synchronous machine ac is on stator and dc is on rotor this is very important most of the time a student thinks sir okay uh, we know that ac is on stator and dc is on rotor but what happens if we place ac is on to the rotor and dc on to the stator okay so now let us observe this now see what happens if we place ac on to the uh, stator uh, on to the rotor and dc on to the rotor now please see if we put ac on to the rotor and dc on to the field then what happens so it will uh, help 
us to understand about why armature is onto the stator and a field is onto the rotor. Now, please see. Let let AC on rotor and DC on stator. For a moment, assume if we placed AC onto the stator, onto the rotor and DC onto the stator. Now, please see, we have this to be the stator and the stators having stator slots. So, I am representing here, please see. These are the stator slots. in which stator in which we are going to place winding now see 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 okay now please see you can say sir these wires are like this is 1, 1 dash, 2, 2 dash, 3, 3 dash, 4, 4 dash, 5 and 5 dash. So, if we connect this by a DC, you can say sir, where 1, 1 dash is representing this type of coil. So, you can say sir, this will be the coil used into this onto the stator. This is your called as a stator winding for a DC. Okay. So, this is your 1, 1 dash, 2, 2 dash, 3, 3 dash, 4, 4 dash. Okay. <coughs> so, you can say sir, if DC is being supplied here, then in 1 current is coming into the uh, conductor and in 1 dash current is going away from the conductor. Similarly, in 2 current is going into the conductor in 2 dash current is going away from the conductor. So, you can found in this fashion. So, if you observe here if we connect the stator with a DC then the current flows here all the current flows in this is in this fashion. So, and the current in return conductors are outward. From the right hand grip rule we know that we can find the polarity of pole formed by the current flowing into the conductor. We all are aware with that whenever a current flows through a wire it will create a field and the direction of field is found by right hand grip rule. Now, please observe if you have a started synchronous machine directly before studying transformer or induction machine then <coughs> you need to pay attention here. Please see let us suppose the current flowing through the wire whenever current flows through the wire it will produces a field and the direction of field is found by right hand grip rule. If the direction of current is represented by the thumb, then the direction of field is found by right hand grip rule. So, if you observe, if the field is up, the, the field is appearing to be coming out from this surface and going into this. So, you can say sir field is appearing coming out from this and going into this. So, this is acting as a north and this is acting as the south pole for the field created by the current flowing in a conductor. So, whenever current flows through the conductor it will create a field. Now, please see this is just a, a revision part please observe you can say sir <coughs> MMF is equals to n into i where n is the number of turns and i is the current flowing through those turns and flux is equals to MMF upon reluctance. So, you can say sir flux is equals to n i upon reluctance. Always remember that whenever current flows through a wire it will produces a field or you can say MMF and that MMF can be represented as n into i where n is the number of turns and i is the current flowing through those turns. MMF is responsible for the motion of flux like EMF is responsible for the motion of current. It is very similar to that like EMF is responsible for the motion of current, MMF is responsible for the motion of flux. Okay? So, magnetic line of forces you can say. So, whenever and a right hand grip rule please observe right hand curl rule. 
whenever current flows through a wire it will produces mmf and that creates a flux okay the direction of flux or you can say the polarity of mmf can be found by the right hand grip right hand curl rule or right hand grip rule in right hand grip rule we have thumb and right hand curl now please observe please observe let us suppose if we have a wire and the wire carries current in this direction then whenever a whenever a wire carries a current it will produces an mmf so you can say uh, that will produces a pole and that the pole can be found by the right hand curl rule so the mmf the polarity of the mmf can be observed as the direction of current is represented by thumb and the right hand curl will represent the direction of field so field is coming out from this north and going into this south so you can say this to be acting as a north and this to be acting as a south for a moment let us suppose if the current is flowing in this direction so if the current is flowing in the direction of thumb then right hand curl will represent the direction of field so you can say sir if this will be the direction of current then the right hand curl will represent the direction of the field and the direction of the field is found to be going into this and coming out from this so this is acting as a north and this is acting as a south this also suggests us that if the two wires carries current in opposite directions are placed nearby to each other then they experiences a repulsive force however if the two wires carries current in the same direction then the, uh, uh, then attractive force exists between them okay now please observe from the right hand curl rule we come to the conclusion that if the direction of current is represented by thumb then the direction of field is found by right hand curl magnetic field the magnetic field is represented by the right hand curl okay now let us suppose we have <coughs> a core that is an iron core and on these iron cores wires are bounded in this fashion or now please see if the current flows through the wire in this fashion so you can say sir the currents are going in this way okay now if you observe the conductor side this side so you found that the current is coming here as outward and the current going here as inward so they are going to create a north and south or you can observe here also if you observe here if this is the direction of the current then right hand curl will represent the direction of field so you can say if we found the direction of field produced by the individual wire up to this point you found that this to be the north and this to be the south similarly field produced by the current flowing in this wire will produces this to be the north and this to be the south if you observe all it seems like a small size magnets are being placed and if the small size magnets are being placed in this fashion then it will be acting as a large magnet if we placed all the if we placed a small magnets together then it will become a big size magnet and the overall magnetic field is seems to be increased so you can say sir this entire portion is now acting as a north as the magnetic line of forces are seems coming out from this and this entire portion is acting as a south as the magnetic line of forces are seems to be going into this is it okay so one can say sir we can also <coughs> use right hand curl rule to define the polarity of the electromagnet if the current is flowing if the current in a wire is flowing in the direction of the curl if the current is flowing in the direction of the curl then thumb will represent the polarity of magnet so you can say the direction of field is upward here you can say the direction of field is upward similarly here if you observe let us suppose if the wire is bounded in this fashion and current is being supplied to this wire in this way then from the right hand curl rule if the direction of current is represented by the curl then thumb will represent the direction of field 
So, you can say sir this is acting as a north and this is acting as a south and magnetic line of forces are completing their path in this fashion. Is it okay? So, you can say sir if the direction of current is right hand curl, if the direction of current is right hand curl then thumb will represent direction of magnetic field. Okay? So, keep uh, in th this in mind that right hand curl rule this is very important for the entire machines. I have explained in it in every part of the machine that is in transformer, in DC machine, in induction machine and as well as in the synchronous machine. So, keep this in mind this is very important part and you know that the flux is equals to MMF upon reluctance. So, keep this also in mind. Now, please observe let us suppose again come to the same uh, part that is in synchronous machine AC is onto the stator and DC is onto the rotor. Why? In order to explain that let us suppose for a moment that AC is onto the rotor and DC is onto the stator. So, if DC is onto the stator then this type of current is flowing onto the stator. You can say the current flowing in one is always inward and the current flowing in one dash is always outward as we are supplying DC. So, because of the current flowing here because of the current flowing here we know that when a current flows through a wire it will create a magnetic field and the direction of magnetic field is found by right hand curl rule from the right hand curl rule if you observe the magnetic field produced by the current flowing in each of the wire can be represented by a single magnetic line of forces and in this way and the magnetic line of forces taking path because of the current flowing in each of the return conductor will be in this fashion. Is it okay? So, you can say sir each of them will create a field I am representing entire field by a only two magnetic line of forces. So, you found the magnetic line of forces of this type where this is acting as a north terminal and this is acting as a south terminal. Since the current is fixed, so you can say the polarity of this pole is fixed. It means this portion is always going to act as a north and this portion is always going to act as a south. Is it okay? That, I, that part of the iron is said to be north which releases the flux into the air and that part of the iron is said to be south which receives the flux from air. Okay? So, do not think that flux is going in this fashion, flux always goes in this uh, fashion. Is it okay? Now, if you observe here because of the current flowing in this way the flux will taking path in this fashion that is why this portion of the entire stator surface is acting as a north and this portion is acting as a south. Is it okay? Now, see we have a rotor and rotor is of three phase. So, uh, three phase rotor A A dash winding 120 degree apart winding is your B B dash. When I am saying three phase balanced winding it means the windings are identical and displaced in space by 120 degree. So, this will be your C C dash these are the three phase winding. Now, these three phase windings. <coughs> C C dash are being rotated by some rotor. You can say this these three phase rotor windings are being rotated by some external prime mover. So, I am using this to be the prime mover by which we are going to rotate this. It is better to represent here. Now, we have rotor and rotor is being rotated by some prime mover. Let me use the blue one. <coughs> so, though, uh, though you are not in front of me, but I feel that you are sitting in front of me. Okay? So, uh, this makes uh, me to be possible to deliver this lecture and it will be very convenient for you also. Okay, now, please see let us suppose this will be the rotor shaft okay? and A dash, B dash and C dash windings are shorted. So, you can say A, A dash 
rotor I am representing B B dash and C C dash. These are the windings as A A dash, A A dash, B B dash and C C dash. A dash, B dash, C dash are shorted. A B and C are taken out by the with the help of uh, slip rings because. If the rotor is rotated, then these windings are rotating. So, if the windings are rotating, so how we will supply the uh, uh, power to the transmission line? One thing is that we have to start rotating the transmission line also, or otherwise we have to provide some facility so that these rotating conductors are connected with some stationary one. Otherwise, they are going to be uh, get. Uh, you can say. <coughs> they are going to be uh, get intact with each other okay just like a rope okay so you can say sir this a a dash out of this a a dash b b dash and c c dash a dash b dash c dash are shorted and the wires are connected in this fashion to a slip ring a phase is connected with a phase slip ring and a brushes are being placed onto this slip ring. These slip rings are providing the connection between the rotating winding with the stationary winding or you can say slip rings the prime functions of the slip ring is to provide a connection between rotating winding and a stationary winding. Similarly, C phase is connected with a C phase slip ring and B phase is connected with B phase slip ring. Okay? So, we need three slip rings for A phase, B phase and a C phase. So, we need three slip rings for A phase, B phase and C phase as well as one slip ring is also required for the neutral. So, you can say one slip ring is also needed for the neutral. One slip ring is also needed for the neutral. Okay. So, total 4 slip rings are required and this is moved by some prime mover. When the rotor rotates, these slip rings are also rotating. These are the copper rings. They are also rotating insulated from each other and insulated from the shaft on which they are mounted. And the brushes are of conductive material and brushes are being slipped onto the rings. So, that is why these are called as slip rings. So, this will provide a facility to connect to provide a connection between the stationary winding with the rotating winding. Okay? The prime function of the slip ring is that to provide connection between a stationary winding to the rotating wind, rotating winding. Now, please observe when we rotate the rotor by this prime mover, then the winding will start rotating in the presence of field. We know that whenever there will be a motion of the conductor in the presence of magnetic field, there will be an induced GMF onto the conductor. So, <coughs> whenever a conductor is whenever the conductor is in motion or you can say whenever there will be a relative motion exists between the conductor and the field, there will be always induced DMF onto the conductor. Okay? So, if you observe if we rotate in this fashion, then firstly A, A dash R in the influence of north and south as they are uh, just below this north and south pole shoe. As soon as after 60 degree of rotation, you can say after 60 degree of rotation, this B dash and B is in influence of this north and south. And after 60 degree of rotation, C, C dash and after 60 degree of rotation again, A, A dash are in the influence of north and south. And thereby, the induced GMFs are producing in the three phase. Okay? So, firstly, A phase will be maximum, then B phase will be, then C phase will be maximum, then B phase will be maximum. It depends upon the direction of rotation, there will be an induced GMF. Okay? That is, uh, that part I will discuss in uh, detail <coughs> later on. Presently, I am just discussing why we are not putting AC onto the rotor and DC onto the stator. Why this is not suitable? Why this is not suitable? Present our conversation, uh, yes of course I am alone, but I feel that you are in front of me. So, presently this conversation is only uh, stick up to the why AC is onto the rotor and DC is onto the stator. Now, please observe. <coughs> you can say sir, let us suppose this uh, generator is of say 200 MVA. 
let us suppose this generator is of 200 mv and 11 kv so if this generator is of 200 mva and 11 kv then the per phase voltage is being 11 by root 3 you can say almost 11 kv the voltage is line to line is 11 kv okay and the current that can be supplied by this generator is i this i is equals to 200 into 10 key power 6 by root 3 into 11 into 10 key power 3 i am hoping you are aware with kva kva is equals to v into i so you can find i as kva upon <coughs> this for three phase kva is root 3 vi so you can easily find this i now if you observe this current is in kilo amperes the thickness of wire is very important why let us suppose i am using a fan all of you uh, are aware with the fan if you observe just above you you found the fan okay so let us suppose we have a fan and that fan is supplied by some wire the thickness of wire if you observe it will be nearly equals to 2 mm okay apart from the insulation if you observe 1 mm to 2 mm wire 1 mm to 2 mm 2 mm wire is sufficient for 5 ampere current rating so you can say sir the uh, 5 ampere or you can say 2 ampere to 5 ampere wire is sufficient to drive fan however if we use the same wire to supply ac then it is not possible what happens if you connect the same if you connect the supply of the ac that is air conditioner with the same wire that is being used to supply fan then what happens you found that the wire is going to be melt out why because the thickness of wire is very small and current is very high and that current is independent upon the resistance of the wire so that creates very high i square r loss and definitely you this i square r loss is a cumulative process because if i square r loss increases thermal resistivity of the conductor increases and thereby resistance of the conductor further increases that increases i square r loss further and this cumulative process your uh, temperature of the conductor reaches up to the melting point of the copper and finally the copper is going to be break out okay so that is why whenever you have to supply ac you use thick wire that is of 15 ampere even the shockets are also in terms of ampere rating is it okay so you can say sir <coughs> because uh, the level that the level that uh, can withstand up to the heat 5 ampere socket is different and 15 ampere socket is different so <coughs> you can say sir the thickness of wire directly proportional to the rating current rating higher current rating means more thicker wire and lower current rating means thin thicker wire so if i am saying kilo amperes of current so it means the wire needed will be thicker than me so why if the wire is needed thicker than me and if the wire is rotated onto the rotor very large centrifugal force acts onto the wire and it will become very difficult to hold that wire in the rotor body is it okay so the first problem arises is a centrifugal force because of the large weight of the wire used in the rotor slots okay now please observe we need four slip rings and the size of each slip ring is very high why because <coughs> insulation level depends upon the insulation level depends upon the uh, you can say uh, voltage rating depends upon the insulation level better to say voltage rating depends voltage rating depends upon the insulation level let us suppose we have a fan and that fan is rated <coughs> of 240 volts to 250 volts so you can say what happens if we apply 440 volts on this fan definitely the insulation provided will be flash over and because of the insulation flash over your fan will get damage so sir why we don't made this fan to be of 440 volt because if we made the fan if we provide the insulation in the fan bindings of 440 volts then the size of the fan will become very large so 
you can say the portability of the fan or the possibility that we can use the fan in a small room is not going to be possible. Is it okay? So, that is why we have to reduce the in, in order to reduce the size of the machine, we have to reduce the overall insulation in case of fan. So, the main purpose of use, uh, uh, taking this example of fan is to show you what is the rating, voltage rating. So, voltage rating depends upon the insulation level provided. If you observe the wire used here will needed an insulation level of nearly 11 kV by root 3. So, if the insulation level required of 11 kV by root 3 that is very high. So, you can say sir very large diameter size of you can say large diameter size of this is required. One can say sir why you are using large diameter instead of using large diameter you can use the high uh, insulation level also. Yes, I am using this as a high insulation level high insulation level, but still we need to uh, use a large diameter slip rings because the rotor is of iron and if we use a small size diameter then the air will not sufficient to provide a dielectric strength between the rotor uh, shaft and the uh, slip ring outer level. This slip ring outer level is made up of conductive material that is say you can say copper this red line which I have represented is the conductive material and this is copper. Okay. This ring used of larger size in diameter as well as larger size in thickness also because kilo amperes of current will have to flow through this slip rings. Okay. So, insulation level is high, if the insulation level is high it means insulation cost is more. Insulation cost is very high. So, insulation cost is very high and 4 slip rings are required. So, overall number of slip rings are required will be more. One more thing because of very high current flowing through the slip rings. So, these brushes used are going to be uh, you can say uh, these brushes needed a maintenance very frequently. A very large size generator 200 MVA generator mostly used in the thermal power plants in our nation. So, in thermal power plants it takes 15 days to start. If the thermal power plant takes 15 days to start then we cannot stop the plant in every 10 or 15 days in order to replace these brushes. Is it okay? Because these brushes are going to be damaged as continuously the rotor is rotating and the high amount of AC current is flowing. Okay. So, to opt uh, to <coughs> avoid frequent maintenance required for the slip rings, we prefer to use AC onto the rotor uh, onto the stator and DC onto the field. Problem number one is centrifugal force acting onto the uh, rotor conductors. Problem number two is number of slip rings are required more and of higher insulation cost and size that increases the overall price of the machine. Okay, one more thing you can say sir cooling is not possible because kilo ampere currents are flowing. So, kilo ampere currents are flowing. So, it will produces heat the current flows into the rotor, rotor wire will produces I square R loss in the format of heat and we must have to take this heat out of the body. Otherwise your machine will going to be damaged out as these heat is going to be cumulative effect. One more thing the fan heating is not sufficient. If you just connect a fan outside boundary of the uh, generator then that will be not sufficient fan or you can say exhaust then that is not sufficient. You cannot fill the oil in between the stator and rotor. If you fill oil in between the stator and rotor then the motion will become very difficult. Okay. So, you can say sir effective cooling is not possible if you are using if you are using rotor if you are using AC onto the rotor because effective cooling is possible with a coolant and the best coolant available is hydrogen coolant. So, you can use a hydrogen coolant by providing a cooling duct, but if you are providing a cooling duct onto the rotor then 
it will be very difficult to keep the it will be very difficult to blow the hydrogen gas from this as the rotor is of rotatory nature so how you can maintain the hydrogen gas to be blow from the rotor and take the heat out from the rotor side okay that is not going to be possible and we can't allow the hydrogen gas to leak in the in the presence of electric uh, in the presence of electric current and heat because hydrogen is a bomb <laughs> so we can't allow the hydrogen to just leak out so effective cooling is not possible though <coughs> centrifugal force needs a very large cost to hold the circuit insulation level required that i am representing by the green one is very high the insulation cost required is very high and the insulation cost required in the slip ring is high more number of slip rings are required frequent maintenance is required let us suppose everything is possible for you we have lot of money so we don't care about this we can hold the conductor onto the rotor surface we can uh, buy a more high, higher cost insulation no issue but how you can provide the cooling the cooling is not possible Co effective cooling is not possible if the ac is onto the rotor and dc is onto the field so we never uh, use large size of generators we never prefer large size of generators to be designed in such a way that ac is onto the rotor and dc is onto the stator so here i am writing all the problems please observe due to large rotor current due to large due to large rotor conductor weight very high centrifugal force acts on conductor very high centrifugal force act on conductor very high centrifugal force act on conductor so problem number one is centrifugal force next is <coughs> for high voltage insulation cost is higher and <coughs> four slip rings are required with high insulation cost and large size with high insulation cost that increase overall costing of the machine and effective that is hydrogen cooling is not possible so effective hydrogen cooling is not possible if the ac is onto the rotor and dc is onto the stator that is why we always keep ac onto the stator and dc onto the rotor now please see if we connect if we design the synchronous generator in such a way that ac is onto the <coughs> that ac is onto the stator and dc is onto the rotor now please see <coughs> now please see when ac is on when ac is on stator and dc is on rotor when ac is on stator and dc is on rotor now please observe <coughs> three phase ac 
winding is placed onto the stator as a a dash then b b dash and 120 degree apart is your c c dash. So, we have three phase stator a dash b dash c dash are shorted and a neutral point is created is it ok. So, in this way we have a three phase stator and we have a rotor to be in this way rotor slots on which DC is being supplied 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, if we supply DC to this in this fashion as cross and dots, then you can say because of the current flowing in the rotor, a rotor will produces a field. Because of the current flowing in the wire from the right hand grip rule, we know that if the current flowing in the wire is outward or in the direction of thumb, then curl will represent the direction of field. And if the currents are flowing in the direction of thumb, then curl will represent the direction of field. So, the field produced by the rotor, if we represent the entire field produced by the rotor by two magnetic line of forces, then it can be represented in this fashion. So, if we represent the entire magnetic field produced by the current flowing in the rotor, then the field is found to be in this fashion. Now, since this field is created by the rotor, so this part of the rotor is acting as a north as this portion of the iron releases the flux into the air and this portion of the iron receives the flux from the air. So, this will be act as a south. Is it ok? So, this will be acting as a north and that will be acting as a south. <coughs> In order to show you the north and south polarity, I am again representing the rotor separately. Now, please observe if the current flows onto the rotor in this fashion that outward currents are available here and inward currents are flowing in this fashion, then because of the current flowing in the conductors, the conductor will creating a magnetic field and that field by the right hand grip rule is can be represented in this fashion. Similarly, here when the current flows through the conductor that will created a field and that field can be represented in this fashion. So, if you observe this is going to be the north and this is going to be the south that portion of the iron is set to be north which releases the flux into the air ok and that portion is set to be the south which receives the flux from the air. Okay. So, that is why I have made this to be the north and this to be the south of the rotor by the simple right hand grip rule I show you. Now, please observe in this particular case for DC we need slip rings because the rotor is rotating. So, if you have to apply by the static uh, by the static. So, you need some uh, arrangement to supply DC and for that we need two slip rings. If the dynamo is attached with the rotor then slip rings are not needed. However, if a static DC supply is given then slip rings are needed. So, let us suppose we can observe here as two slip rings one is connected with the line and one is connected with the line this ok as I have represented in the previous section. So, you can say we have a two slip rings and that these two slip rings we have connected a battery V. Now, since the current flows into the rotor is only limited by the rotor impedance. And since DC current is flowing, so that current is only countered by the rotor resistance and which is very small because the wire resistance is very small. Rotor wire resistance is very small as we are using a good conductor. So, since resistance is very small, so a small amount of voltage or you can say 250 volt is sufficient to cause very high current. Okay. So, with 250 volts let us suppose you can use uh, you are using 250 volts and more number of turns of thin wires are being placed onto the rotor surface. So, since the current needed 
will be uh, lower as the number of turns we can increase the number of turns also or you can say the current is very high so we will get very uh, strong magnetic field here okay so the thickness of wire is lower in each rotor slot sections and that is why the centrifugal force acting on the wire is lower is it okay and the second thing is because now we only have to maintain the field the field current is lower however the armature current is very higher this ac current is very high 200 mva power is supplied by this ac we are not being supplying this to be 200 mva okay so this only have to create a strong magnet and in order to create a strong magnet you can do it by using by increasing the number of turns of thin wires or you can say by increasing the number of turns and the wires of sufficient that can carry a few or you can say fractional kilo ampere currents okay 800 400 ampere current so if you compare with 17 uh, kilo amperes uh, 800 400 current is very smaller so the thickness of wire needed is very slow so the centrifugal force acting on this is a smaller so they are not affected much by the centrifugal force it means rotor can easily rotate without using some extra uh, provision to uh, stop the rotor conductors within the rotor slots and one more thing the voltage needed onto the slip ring is only of 2250 volt so the slip ring size and the insulation cost needed for the slip rings will be lower A slip ring size and insulation cost needed will be lower insulation level is low so cost of insulation is low in the previous case when we have connected when we have designed dc on stator and ac on rotor then we need four slip rings three for the phases and one for the neutral however in this case we only need two slip rings and the insulation cost is also lower so overall cost of insulation decreases centrifugal force is lower in this case and the most important thing is effective cooling you can say sir the conductor needed on a is the same yes if this generator is supplying 200 mba power at 11 kv then voltage and level of insulation needed across these stator slots will remain same as in the previous one but when the current flows that current will create a very high i square r loss and that high i square r loss can be easily taken out by using cooling ducts these are the cooling ducts provided onto the stator body and hydrogen as a coolant is passed through these cooling ducts and that hydrogen gas takes the heat produced by the I square R loss due to the current flowing into the stator conductors. So these coolant <coughs> these cooling ducts carries hydrogen gas as a coolant so because of this very effective cooling is possible you can say sir since the stator is stationary so if we flow continuously hydrogen gas from the coolant ducts then it will be possible and the hydrogen will keep within the ducts they are not going to be leaking out as it is as that can be possible in case if the stator slots carries DC and rotor slot carries AC. Now please see <coughs> how we are using these cooling ducts please observe here. So we have this to be the stator surface and on this stator surface these are the cooling ducts which carries hydrogen gas as a coolant. So these are the cooling ducts
so with these cooling ducts these are the cooling ducts in which hydrogen gas is flowing because of the flow of hydrogen gas the overall stator surface will remain cool and in the in this way the effective cooling of the machine is possible so the main reason behind using stator onto the ac and dc onto the rotor is cooling however it also introduces the benefits of lower insulation cost it means overall cost is lowering down centrifugal force is lowering down and the number of slip rings required in this particular case is needed to be low okay so always remember in synchronous large size synchronous generators ac is always placed onto the stator and dc is always placed onto the rotor is it okay